And um, I want to thank Councilman Concordian for joining us this evening, this afternoon. I'm already in the evening, this afternoon. It's been a long day. Um, we don't anticipate Councilman Wissar. And I want to welcome Councilman Perry, who's with us today. And let's just go through the agenda real fast, and then we'll ask uh, Councilman Perry to come and uh, speak to us. On uh, item one, council member, we see no, what's in cards? We don't have any cards for items one, two, and three. So, Roberta, can you read into the, uh, into the record item number one? Uh, sure, council members, item one is a report from the Cultural Heritage Commission. It's relative to the inclusion of the TR Craig residence, the Pepper Gate Ranch as a historic cultural monument. It's located in CD12. Uh, it's been recommended to approve this item. We have a second on that? Second. Then we have uh, item number two, Roberto. Yes, uh, council members, item two is a report from the Cultural Heritage Commission. It's relative to the inclusion of the Cross of San Isidro uh, located in CD2 as a historic cultural monument. We can move for approval. That'll be a second, and that'll be the action of this committee. Item three, we can continue to March 29th. And hopefully in council on April 12th. And that gets us to the main event. Item number four. <laughs> Councilor Perry, welcome to the Plum Committee. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And I'm very pleased to be back again to express my support, strong support for the Wilshire Grand project. Last week I offered a series of amendments and I understand that these are now a part of the official record and do not need to be repeated again this week. My office has worked closely with the planning department and the office of the city attorney on this project. The Wilshire Grand project is groundbreaking and it has been difficult at times to reconcile the necessary entitlements with the city's very outdated suburban planning code. Once constructed, the new Wilshire Grand Development will be the first high-rise office building in downtown in more than 22 years. Now, last week, at the advice of the city attorney, I offered a number of amendments regarding the proposed supplemental use district for the Wilshire Grand project. Specifically, the development agreement was amended to include a $400,000 contribution to the environmental study and related work for the Figueroa Corridor Supplemental Use District a takedown provision of illegal signs was mandated for the placement of any off-site signage and specific construction thresholds were established before any signage is allowed. These amendments are allowing the Wilshire Grand, for lack of a better word, supplemental use district to move forward in a way that does not conflict with the city's existing policy on signage. But I must note that signage is an important part of downtown and downtown's architectural context and contributes to the dynamic feeling of the areas where there are sports and entertainment uh, and restaurant venues and contributes to the city skyline. Now, this particular proposed district provides a linkage from the proposed Wilshire Grand project to the convention center in terms of its connection or the nexus, an urban connection for lack of a better word. The signage being proposed for this project is a new technology. It is fully integrated into the curtain wall of the project. What is being proposed by the developers is not a billboard and it is not standard signage that has been seen in this city to date. It's a new technology, as I said. I feel that it's appropriate to ask the Plum Committee to grant the applicant's appeal for signage on level two, the area between 35 feet and 150 feet in height. It is important to maintain the architectural integrity with the building as it is envisioned. I've also been able to work with planning in the city attorney's office on responses to the environmental impact report. The circulation issues are being addressed by the applicant in conjunction with the Department of Transportation and Planning.
It is also my understanding that substantial progress has been made with regard to three of the major circulation items that have been raised by the neighbors. Study of three left turn lanes on Wilshire Boulevard to Figueroa Street, permanently converting Francisco to four lanes, and exploring the potential of a 7th Street garage access point into and out of the project. The P Department of Transportation is working with the developers to further refine these alternatives and to conclude as to the vi viability. It is my understanding that there will be clarity with regard to the workability of these options prior to the item being considered by full council. So I ask that you approve this project today. The applicant has been working with the planning department on these entitlements for over 22 months. The redevelopment of the Wilshire Grand Hotel will provide a host of meaningful benefits, as I said last week, community benefits, uh, not only the creation of new jobs, a significant financial contribution to the general fund through new taxes and multiple public infrastructure improvements. There is approximately $74 million in community benefits in the development agreement. The benefits include the creation of a new city tax revenue beginning in 2015 of $22 million a year and the creation of new jobs, as I've said. The project alone will create 7,300 construction jobs, 9,700 new permanent jobs, and the developer will enter into a project labor agreement which will guarantee that city residents are put to work. Additionally, the developer will provide a comprehensive health care, welfare, and severance agreement for the existing 480 Wilshire Grand Hotel employees and the developer has agreed to a collective bargaining agreement which will be applicable to the new hotel. The developer will provide health care benefits to the existing 480 employees while the project is under construction. This is costing the developer about $11 million. The importance of the Wilshire Grand cannot be underestimated, the new Wilshire Grand. Um, the Wilshire Grand Hotel currently is losing money and would close absent this redevelopment opportunity. If it closes, obviously we would lose all the jobs, lost the tax revenue, plus we'd have a shuttered hotel and office building. So I hope that you will move this development forward today. Uh, the city would be sending the wrong message to potential investors and jeopardizing real economic development otherwise. The redevelopment of the hotel will contribute greatly to the redevelopment of our region and the viability of the convention center and other downtown developments that employ many numbers of people. So it's critical to move forward, and I hope that you'll approve all aspects of this, including the signage. Um, there, I, I hope this doesn't uh, occur today, but if there are requests to continue this item again, I would ask you as a chair, Mr. Chair, that you note the work that has taken place over the past week and move it forward, forward with the knowledge that there will be even more resolution on the major transportation issues prior to full council review. Again, this project has been in the full, full public purview for 22 months, and the draft EIR and final EIR were circulated for the legally mandated duration period. So I hope to have your approval today, and thank you for your consideration allowing me to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Perry. And uh, any questions of my colleague, for Councilman Perry? Before uh, I, I just want to say, I said last time, the more I learn about this project, the better I like it. And I think I raised a number of questions last time. It sounds as though they've essentially all been, all of the land use issues anyway are being resolved. And uh, and so I, I, no, I don't think so. The, the one thing that you mentioned, though, Ms. Perry, that I wanted to ask you about, uh, did I understand you to say that, that the um, on the signage issue, you were talking about the urban connection with the convention center and the Staples Center. Would that mean that there would be a single sign district created for that area that would encompass that entire area? It all together. Yeah. Great. I think that makes good sense. Fantastic. I just want to compliment you and your staff uh, in working and getting us to this point. Um, and appreciate the time that we have in getting this continued for one week. It allowed us to drill down to some of the issues and get us to a place where we can get a little bit more clarity. And hopefully when it comes to council, we have a strong foundation to stand on as we move forward. So I appreciate that Thank opportunity you. as well. Thank you, Ms. Mary. Um, that being said, um, 
As you recall, we essentially closed public hearing in the last session. Uh, I do have cards here, and I want to thank you for your participation, but I wanted to use this time so that my colleague and I can ask more specific questions and get an update from the staff as to where we're at today, uh, how we approached some of the challenges that were addressed the last time we met, and what type of resolutions were recommended. So if you may please introduce yourself and have the staff come forward. Great, uh, thank you, Kevin Keller, City Planning. Uh, we have been working uh, very busily on this project for the last week, and I have a couple updates. I will not give the full presentation again, just for the sake of time. Uh, there was a couple key components, uh, one being the issue of transfer of floor area rights. We, you were, the committee asked for a little report back on the status of that, how that's working. The circulation issues, uh, we do have Jay Kim from DOT here to report back of any questions involving that angle. I'm going to spend a minute on the signage. And then also uh, just remind the committee that we did submit some revised findings and conditions at the last meeting. And we'd hope that those would be included in any action taken uh, for that. On the transfer of floor area rights, uh, the city planning department has uh, resumed or received the authority in this area to process transfer of floor area um, once the redevelopment agency in the area expired July 18th. The enabling ordinance takes effect March 27th. So it is our advice and the city attorneys, I believe their advice that the transfer of floor area transaction cannot be effectuated by the city council until after March 27th. Actually, the first council date would be March 29th, I believe. Uh, there's approximately 6 million square feet available at the convention center site. That's based on a 2008 report on the Park Fifth project. This project is approved a maximum transfer of 1,485,458 square feet, leaving a remainder of approximately 4.5 million square feet on that site. Uh, it's my understanding, although no application has been filed, that a stadium or event center could potentially um, consume another million square feet of that amount, and that's very approximate, which would leave a still a balance of about 3.5 million square feet. So the question as to whether the city would have a remaining balance to um, perhaps be used towards a convention center expansion, a stadium, or even another similar large project, there still is, is over three, approximately three and a half million square feet available. So I want to report back, and that seems to be, you know, just for comparison, this is about a one and a half million square foot transfer. We'd still have about three and a half million square feet. Um, we received a question, and I just want to go on the record, uh, about our TFAR application as a courtesy last week. Planning staff did email out a, a PDF version of an application. I actually, we did pull the file. We have a signed copy here. There was a concern that we didn't have a signed copy in the file. There also is a master land use application in our planning file, and I have some copies I brought down from our records to distribute, so I have those, have those available. Finally, in terms of the, um, the valuation of the TFAR model, uh, staff did rely upon a valuation prepared by the general uh, by General Services uh, Department, which did a assessed value per square foot. Uh, it was based on the Francisco Street parcel, which is adjacent to the project site currently. Actually, it was included in the project description of the environmental document. And uh, a price per square foot was identified as $180 per square foot. Uh, staff did use the most conservative number. There was a range of whether we should use a, a more reduced number. We used the 180 square feet in calculating the public benefits. It is true that pursuant to the ordinance, a uh, development may claim up to 50% 50 50 of the public benefit payment for on-site improvements, and that's what's before you today. I believe there's been some comments regarding the, uh, the nature of those benefits. Those have been explained, the public plaza, some of the other benefits there, but that is a 50% reduction for that on-site uh, amount. In terms of, uh, maybe I'll go to circulation last, but I wanted to hit some of the signage co components. Staff has been working um, with the city attorney and the recent motion in terms of a long-term uh, effort to connect this district to the LA Sports Entertainment District. There are also uh, a couple other districts in the works, so there'd be a unified approach to this corridor stretching from the metro station at Figaro and 7th down to the entertainment center uh, at around Olympic and 11th and 12th. So just to, yes. I just want to rephrase what you just said, but I want to put it in clear terms, at least for myself, is this can be viewed as one of the anchors of a proposed signed district, right. with Ali Live being another anchor, and depending how 
development emerges in the future mm -hmm. will have a, a set boundaries that formulates a whole district. So it's not standing by itself and it's not just its own contained SUD, correct? Correct. And staff okay. would begin, and it's, uh, as, as uh, Councilmember Perry stated, there is funding available as part of the development agreement here for staff to pursue an environmental review and an adoption process, working with stakeholders in the community in that process right. uh, to actually adopt that district. In terms of the, uh, the appeal, I just wanted to, what I didn't cover last time, I'd like to just cover some of the, um, the items brought up today regarding the uh, additional request to grant the appeal in vertical sign zone two. Basically, like I think we talked last week, we have vertical sign zones. At last week, uh, vertical sign zone one is zero to 35 feet, sort of the pedestrian experience. District vertical sign zone two is 35 to 150 feet or the height of the podium. In this case, it's designed to be around 80 or 90 feet, but in the district, we allow about 150 feet. Again, that's the datum point of the historic downtown height limit. And in theory, uh, or as applied, there's a, a context of building environment above that. Above that uh, level is vertical sign zone three. That's a level I think the committee discussed last time about adding back in an architectural lighting component. And at the top of the building is the crown lighting, which we have spent some time talking about. The planning commission and planning staff carefully evaluated the signage proposal on all these levels. And at the end of the day, the planning commission did not grant or recommend approval of the architectural lighting component. And so I think I made that clear that just on behalf of the commission, I wanted to present that again today, that the planning commission did not recommend approval of the architectural lighting component. The committee can still add that component in. It just would not be consistent with the planning commission. The planning commission did approve. But to be clear, yes. the planning staff did emerge with an original proposal that was discussed by the commission. Yes. And the commission essentially readdressed it with a different set of standards and, and thresholds. That's correct. The original planning uh, staff recommendation was to approve the architectural lighting component. Um, that being said, at this point, we're here presenting the city planning commission recommendation, but absolutely correct. Okay. Uh, level two, again, is the podium level. Uh, planning staff and the planning commission, um, which adopted, had fairly strict sign standards for each sign. And so I just want to walk through five of the key ones and just, just to disclose the, the, uh, the, the appeal amount that's being requested. Uh, for example, on 7th Street facing south, planning staff and the planning commission recommended a maximum sign square feet, I'm paraphrasing a very complicated document, of 3,000 square feet. The appeal in front of the commission would raise that from 3,000 to 16,000. On the north, facing north uh, on Wilshire, planning commission and planning staff recommended a maximum size, size of square feet of 2,000. The appeal in front of the committee would raise it from 2,000 to 8,000. Planning staff approved a corner sign on the corner of Wilshire and Figueroa of 1,200 square feet. The appeal in front of the committee would raise that from 1,200 square feet to 4,500 square feet. And finally, facing west, which is the Francisco Street frontage, uh, planning did recommend approval of only scrolling news ribbons, no large-scale integral electronic displays. Uh, again, facing west, I think, raises another policy issue, although there is one building between this building and the freeway. Um, West-facing facades have a greater visibility towards surrounding communities and also towards our freeway network. And so in the past, we've been very careful about how we approve those. Uh, in this case, there is a request to go from about a 450-square-foot sign to 1,200 square feet uh, for two of those. And so I just wanted to point out, and, and again, the committee is, is, uh, is available to make those edits. I just wanted to just show the nature of that and just reiterate that although we understand there's always a gradient here, uh, these were carefully evaluated and, and uh, were supported by our planning commission. So I just wanted to call that out. Thank you. Thank and you. Maybe I can ask uh, Mr. J. Kim to come up and respond to the circulation. Yes, please, because uh, his original presentation raised certain concerns, and I want to make sure we understand how we addressed those concerns and what's being proposed. Uh, good afternoon, Jay Kim from DOT. Uh, last week, uh, there were three specific circulation items that were raised. Uh, and I believe uh, at that time, I reported to the committee that it would require some additional analysis. Uh, that work has been done, and we have made some significant progress. Uh, at Wilshire and Figueroa, the propo proposal was to put in a triple left by converting one of the through lanes into an optional, uh, I'm sorry, into a third triple left. Uh, we <coughs> received the uh, analysis, the micro simulation work that was done. 
we checked the assumptions and the conclusions. They appear reasonable. And at this point, uh, we are uh, supportive of the proposal. And so uh, I think that one is, is fine with DOT. Uh, on the second item, uh, Francisco Street, the uh, proposal was to convert the three-lane operation into a four-lane operation. Again, on that one, we have no objections. We're fine with that proposal as well. Uh, probably the more challenging one uh, would be to weave in an extra uh, self-parking uh, ingress off of 7th Street. Uh, the original proposal had a valet operation with a, uh, with a port kosher type of uh, setup. Uh, and to weave in an extra driveway would have been very challenging. However, uh, I'd like to commend the applicant. They were very flexible. They actually looked at their valet operation without adding any additional driveway cuts on 7th. Uh, they were able to, able to actually uh, weave in an extra lane that would take those self-parkers uh, down into the garage. So essentially, you're creating a, a two-lane down ramp into the garage. Uh, but that does bring up other issues that are beyond traffic. I mean, it does bring up architectural. It does bring up the engineering structural. issues. Yeah. There, are, there are three dimensional engineering issues that come up. And so I believe uh, uh, the first look is encouraging. And from the DOT, uh, our responsibility on the street side, again, we have no objections. It looks like it's all doable. But again, uh, we would defer to the applicant because of those other issues, the structural, architectural, uh, and even potentially parking impacts. Uh, I think they're still evaluating the full uh, feasibility of that potential. But again, all signs are very encouraging at this point. So, so one of the concerns that are raised with the, the left-hand turns in requiring a fourth lane the triple lefts? Yes, the triple lefts, I'm sorry. Correct. Yes, the original, the current operation today uh, at Wilshire and Figueroa in the eastbound direction is it's a, uh, two left turn lanes and then two through lanes. The proposal was to convert one of the through lanes and turn that into a third triple left. And so our concern from DOT was uh, if you repurpose that lane, uh, for a triple left turn lane, how would it impact the through movement and would it cause any additional unintended consequences in the future? And so we looked at the future volumes, we looked at the potential future operation, uh, and using this uh, more uh, finite tool and looking at a very detailed operational level, uh, we were able to determine that it's something that we as a department could live with. Again, you know, when you're Far out into the future, with all the traffic, you're you're sort of trying to balance uh, different movements. But again, uh, the uh, the predominance of the left turn movement is such that uh, for us to give the priority to that movement uh, does seem to be um, workable. And so that's why we're we're okay. prepared to say today that uh, we are willing to endorse that proposal. Thank you for that. Any questions? Any further, Council? I appreciate that. Um, I, I do have a, I can ask the planning staff to come back one more time. Um, I strongly believe that we are in a process where we want to engender an environment where we're business friendly, where we want to stimulate investment. But I also know that when we have these processes that we are speaking to entitlements and billable rights for the future with no real guarantees that it can be built. <coughs> That being said, um, when we look at the signage requests, the most current signage requests, um, controls for making sure that what's being requested is befitting of the <coughs> proposed structure. But let's assume we have a crystal ball, we can see in the future, and let's say the building is half its height or a quarter of the height. Can we introduce language that essentially aligns the allowable signage based on the presence of a structure of a certain size? Mm -hmm. it, can we introduce language that allows for that level of flexibility? Not to take away from the dream, the goal, I, I really think we can get there. Uh, we have two beautiful towers that are being proposed, but you also have rights that are being allowed for signage 
of a scale of that nature. But let's assume we go halfway. It's just one building. Can we introduce language that allows us to stay within the spirit of the intent of the original language? Uh, certainly, Kevin Keller, City Planning again. And that's really a question I think that applies regardless of whether you know 300% more signage or the amount of signage that's adopted. How do we ensure that the project moves forward at, at I think we've used the word iconic level? And taking a look at that, at the last commission meeting, committee meeting, planning staff had recommended some initial thresholds working with the developer and the city attorney's office in terms of some thresholds of, of to make sure that the city got an iconic uh, development of a certain scale to qualify for signage. So in that case, I believe the current thresholds were identified that the second tower would be an 800 foot tower. 800 feet is certainly taller than the majority of all towers downtown. I believe that one of their closest towers is around 717 feet. So that would certainly be a major addition to the LA skyline, um, would hit all the vertical sign zones, including the crown, and uh, be a significant uh, structure. The first uh, phase, or what's proposed to be the first phase, is actually the hotel tower. That's proposed to be a slightly smaller building, but still a, a very large tower. At this point, the recommended threshold was a number of hotel rooms, 500 hotel rooms. It could be possible that staff could also work, evaluate some of the plans, and come back with a height threshold that's appropriate for that tower as well to meet. And also, perhaps, I think the idea of, of some kind of scalable nature. So if, obviously, we can't, we, you know, planners, we don't mandate exact heights. We have a, a, a clearance. We have some kind of a threshold, but a threshold we could evaluate below which uh, there might have to be some change or removal of sign rights. I, I believe we, you know, I can't recommend that. I can't come back with today with that, but I certainly think we could keep working on that as right. this moves forward uh, to develop those thresholds and, re and report back. We also had a, a threshold recommendation that the project, which this project does, would e eclipse the six to one FAR uh, floor area ratio boundary. Uh, the, base, the base FAR heights in downtown are set at six to one. And then a project can go above the six to one ratio through the transfer of floor area rights. Certainly, any project taking advantage of that process also is a project of a certain scale and size. And so I think if the idea is to ensure that these rights are really granted towards projects that are directing and concentrating growth around transit, providing new employment opportunities and, and, and uh, revitalization, those are probably some of the things we could uh, certainly keep working on and probably report back as it, as it moves to council. And I would hope that um with all the stakeholders being on the same page, that right. we are consistent with this notion of, of wanting to see progress in the city at the same time put in the uh, safety measures, if you will, to secure the type of uh, uh, scenarios that are being proposed uh, so that we can keep within that scale. And, and I would be very much appreciative of that. Um, uh, Councilman, any other questions on these issues? Okay. Thank you. So I don't have any more questions. And um, Madam Attorney, I think we've covered most of the issues uh, that were addressed last week. And I don't see any more questions from Councilmember Krikorian. Uh, most of my questions I've, I've addressed. I can move on plumb recommendation unless there's something else we should cover that uh, you're aware of. I think we've covered all our bases. OK. So that being said, I do have some uh, recommendations, Council Member, that allows us to move this forward. Um, one, that uh, we certify the final environmental impact report, EIR, State Clearing House Number 2009-071035, located in Council File Number 11-0106, and related CEQA findings. Statement of Overriding Considerations, Mitigation, Monitoring, and Reporting Program for the Wilshire Grant Project. Two, approve the development agreement between the city and the developer for a term of 20 years and request the city as to form an legality, the city attorney to form a legality. Three, approve the transfer of floor area rights from the Los Angeles Convention Center site at 1201 South Figueroa Street, a city-owned property to the subject property for an amount not to exceed one million four hundred eighty five thousand four hundred fifty eight square feet. So the numbers are playing with my eyes right there. Um, 
and request the city attorney and city planning to prepare any necessary documents, ordinance needed to effectuate this transfer. Four, request the city attorney to prepare the ordinance relative to a supplemental to a sign supplemental use district to set forth sign regulations, procedures, guidelines, and standards for the project site a significantly amended and with inclusion of off-site and on-site parameters. And that will include the discussion we just had on the thresholds. Uh, direct five, direct DOT to continue to evaluate the feasibility of installing a triple left turn from Wilshire Boulevard to Figueroa Street prior to the council date. Six, grants in part, deny in part the appeals filed by the Brookfield Properties and Hanjin International Corporation. Seven, adopt the additional conditions submitted by the Planning Department on February 22, 2011. Eight, adopt the findings submitted by the Planning Department on February 22, 2011. Nine, adopt the amendments submitted by Councilman Jan Perry on February 22, 2011. And ten, request the Planning Department to prepare any necessary revised findings that may be needed. Now, did we cover all of our bases? I believe we have. Okay, are we fine? And as the city clerk, I just want to, uh, Michael Espinoza of the Office of City Clerk, I just want to recognize that we have not received the final development agreement yet. Okay. And when we receive it, we will need a um, 24-day um, notice. And I hope I'm not told it's in the mail. Okay, and I, that was, um, just to clarify, okay. number two. Uh, number two. But, but we should have that in the file by the time it gets to council. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Menzer? One, one, Mitch Menzer uh, representing the applicant. Just one clarification to make sure that Councilwoman Perry's amendment as of today regarding the level two signage was also included in the motion. Okay. So we would include that uh, amendment. I see no questions with that. Um, well, this can be almost anticlimactic. Um, I want to thank everyone for their strong efforts, Councilman Perry's office. That you have to be planning the night in part, the Brookfield and the uh, applicant. Wait, the Brookfield okay. and the applicant. You only read the Brookfield. Okay, so to be further, to clarify further, grants in part, deny in part, the appeals filed by the Brookfield properties and the applicant. Hanjin International Corporation. So being very crystal clear here. So that would be the action of this committee. Uh, congratulations, and we'll move forward to this full council. Congratulations. I don't think we have a director's uh, report today. Anybody here for public comment? Seeing none, this meeting is adjourned.